Let's get into, I'm just gonna draw a basic uh, relay. I'm not gonna draw a five pin. I'm just gonna draw a basic four pin for now. I'll leave the five pin for later on. What you do need to know is that we have a coil side and we have a switch side. So one side is our coil side, meaning it's got our coil of wire. And if you watched the last video, you know that if we put current through a coil of wire, it creates an electromagnet. And that's what our relay is doing here. It's utilizing that. On the switch side, it's exactly what you might expect. We've got two contacts in here and a switch. And when this coil is energized, it will close the switch. And like I said, I'm just going through a basic, normally open four pin relay. So I'm not gonna get too crazy in, but into it, but if you understand this, you can understand the other types of relays, no problem. I wanna get the basics down right now. So first things first, um, a lot of times, both of these will have straight power from whatever the power source might be, but on your wiring diagram, it'll show from a fuse straight to the switch or a fuse straight to the coil. Not always, sometimes it goes through multiple components before it gets to these, depending on how the relay is turned on or energized. Um, but what we're doing here is we are splitting a circuit between a control side and essentially like a motor side or, or whatever it is that you're doing. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a, uh, I'm gonna draw a motor and uh, it's gonna go straight to ground, right? On this side, and a lot of times what they'll do, I know I showed you guys in the previous videos, switches on the power side or positive side. That's not always the case. We use ground side switches all the time. Um, on our control side, we will have a switch that the driver will control. And that's usually going to either control the ground, open or close. Ground, no ground. Um, and I will go ahead and just, I'm gonna draw a fuse um, so we don't get confused, confused here. Um, so we know that these are essentially, and I hate this term, but hot at all times. Um, when you see that on a diagram, it's generally referring to voltage at all times, which is silly. We use relays to use a small amount of current to control a large amount of current. First things first, we need to identify the load in this circuit. On this side, it's actually going to be our coil of wire. The coil of wire does something. Not only is it, it's actually gonna produce a little bit of heat too, but it's also going to produce a magnetic field. So it's actually doing a job. So it's going to use up the voltage in the circuit. Down here is a lot more obvious, our motor, right? Whether that be your starter motor, whether that be a fan motor, whatever kind of motor you want it to be, it's, it's a motor that does something, it spins. And back to those vital things, we have a power path and we have a ground path um, and we have switches as a control in our circuit, right? So what we're doing here in this motor circuit, I might be pulling a whole lot of amperage that the more amperage flowing through the circuit, the larger gauge wire I'm gonna need to use. Um, and you might not wanna be holding on to a certain amount of amperage um, in case you were to get shocked. So what we'd rather do, because thicker wire is more expensive and it's heavier, uh, and then there's always that, you know, you don't want to be holding on to a ton of, uh, of amps on a switch that you're controlling and touching. So to save money, to save weight, and for safety, I am going to use the least amount of thick gauge wire in this circuit possible. Uh, and how I can do that is by using a much smaller amperage uh, draw in a circuit to control that large amperage draw. So in this circuit, our load is the coil of wire. Um, this is going to be a very low amperage circuit. So I can use very thin wires to control this circuit here. Now down here, you control that switch. Um, you are going to be the one who either presses the button, turns the knob, uh, whatever it might be, turning a key in a certain position. This switch is you, the driver. So this is what you have your hands on. So it's safer because this circuit is low amperage. 
I can run a lot thinner gauge wire throughout the vehicle. So depending on where this is located, uh, I can make the control side a lot longer and save weight and money um, because I'm using thinner gauge wire. So we use relays a ton. In fact, most loads are controlled by relays in the car. Your headlights, your horn, uh, everything. Everything is controlled by relays, essentially, not everything. I want to discuss some basic stuff as far as where should voltage be, where should voltage not be. Um, and for that, we need to identify our load. So we did. Here's our load here and here's our load here. Then you're going to want to identify your power side. We know coming from here all the way down to here on this side and then from here to here, right? Because after here, our load should have used up all the voltage. Then on our ground side, on this side from here to here, it's very short. In fact, on a lot of motors, it may ground through the case. So it may not even have a ground wire. It may have a ground wire, it just depends. Down here, anywhere after our load is here and here, even though our switch is here. So you need to know where voltage should be and where it should not be in the circuit because relays get really confusing. If I'm testing into my switch side, we'll say it's an available voltage test, right? Voltage at any given point. I've got power coming up to here. I have had no load yet, so I should have 12 volts right there, right? I should. If this, now I'm showing this relay normally open. Uh, and I mentioned this in the wiring diagram section in my last video. When you're looking at a diagram, whatever position it shows a switch or a relay in, that's what it is normally when you're not doing anything to the circuit. Um, if it's a circuit that is normally on, then this switch might be normally closed. Um, but a lot of your stuff oops, is going to be considered uh, normally open a lot of the time. So here's the thing. If my relay, let's just say is engaged. I'm going to go ahead and say that you close the switch, which means this switch is now closed. Let's pretend that this switch is closed. If this switch is closed, all this is, is a conductor. That's it. That's it's like a wire. So down at the bottom, I should see 12 volts. We haven't used anything yet. We haven't done any work yet. So that's where the 12 volts comes back into play. Now down here going into my motor, I should have 12 volts. Now we've already identified this as the load in the circuit. The motor is actually doing work. Therefore, it's going to use voltage up in the circuit. So I will then, as long as this is closed, have, am I allowed any voltage back to the battery? Mm -mm. So I, as long as my motor's working, I should have zero volts. So this is where I should see those numbers. Now, if we're looking on this side, same thing. Here's my fuse going into my coil of wire. I haven't done anything yet. So we should see 12 volts. We did identify the coil of wire as the load in this side of the circuit. And since we're energizing it right now, if it's energized, meaning you closed this switch, you provided a ground, therefore we have continuity. This is going to use up all the voltage. So if I did another available voltage test, zero volts, as long as it's working properly. Obviously there's nothing left, so it's just gonna go straight to ground. This is what I would read if the switch that you have to control this circuit is closed, the relay is working normally, my motor is functioning normally, or my load is functioning normally. Let's talk about what you might see if the relay is in fact open instead. So I'm going to open up the relay so your switch is now open, um, and because that's open. So hopefully you guys understand that. When I close this Right, when this switch is open, I have no continuity. So this is actually the first side I wanna discuss. 
because this is where people get really confused. So obviously going into my relay, nothing has changed. We're not doing any work. I should still see 12 volts no matter what. If I see zero or I see less than 12, I know that I've got a voltage drop somewhere here. Um, the easiest thing to do is really always look at your fuse if I don't have voltage going in. The easiest thing, you always wanna work smarter, not harder. You don't get paid, you don't always get paid for all those extra hours in diagnostics. So uh, you wanna always think the easiest access pieces and you always want to think about um, what's the most common problems. If this switch is open, I no longer have a ground path. I have a power path, I've got my load, but I no longer have a ground path. And that is a problem because that means I have no continuity. My favorite word, continuity. If I have no continuity, no continuous path for current flow, I cannot have work being done. I cannot have voltage drop. That means this coil of wire will not produce a magnetic field and will not produce heat. It's not gonna do any work. If it's not doing any work, but it has, still has connection, we are going to see 12 volts. <gasps> what we will see is we will see voltage, the same 12 volt up until my open switch because there is no physical connection between here and here. So if I was to test after my switch, because there is no connection to transfer that voltage, um, I'm gonna see zero volts. Now I wanna throw one more thing in here. Just because I have voltage doesn't mean I have current. If I have an open circuit, no continuity, I have no current flow. So I can have voltage without current flow and that, that's a concept that just blows people's minds um, because it doesn't make any sense and I know that it's hard to grasp around them, um, but I can have electrical pressure with no current flow if I have an open circuit. And an open switch is essentially an open circuit, no continuity, it just happens to be on purpose. Now, since this is not dropping any voltage and it's not doing any work, it's not producing a magnetic field, meaning this switch never closes. So if I was to test voltage going in, I have no barrier here, uh, my fuse is good, Every, it's just simply a wire, I should have 12 volts going in no matter what at all times. However, if I was to test for voltage after the switch, this is an electrical open, right? There is no connection, no physical connection from the top to the bottom. So I will see zero volts, meaning my motor gets no voltage, meaning no worky. Relays do go bad. Sometimes the switch will break inside. Sometimes it will build, uh, sometimes we'll build up corrosion inside in whatever load I have now turns into a series circuit, stuff like that. Sometimes the coil, uh, will break inside. So even though uh, it looks like it's acting normally, it's not. That's essentially how relays work. If you have any questions, please post them.